Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the webinar today. We appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule this afternoon to check out seven benefits of migrating from ship gear to Starship. My name is Chris Lettner. I'm a sales rep with V Technologies, and I'll be taking you through a brief PowerPoint today to talk about the value proposition of what Starship can offer versus the ship gear product and uh, some of the different uh, options that are available with that, followed by a product demonstration. If you have any questions, feel free to type those into the question area of the control panel in GoToWebinar. And if the time allows, we'll get to those at the end of the presentation. First, a little bit about V Technologies as a company. We've been around since the late 80s uh, for 32 years with a total customer base of 10,000 customers. That's always growing. Uh, we've been working with uh, Dynamics GP uh, dating back to 1992 with the Great Plains DOS product and through all the various iterations over the years. V Technologies is a UPS ready provider as well as a FedEx Platinum solution provider as well. So some of the basic benefits of moving over from ship gear to Starship, obviously a uh, multi-carrier platform versus just UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager. So you have multiple carriers, multiple modes of transport, all from the same user interface, one database and repository of data for all of your history and transactions, and you can do both parcel and freight shipping together in the same user interface. Uh, what Starship offers with Dynamics GP versus ShipGear is the ability to connect into the line item data. So you have all the product information that's available to print out on documents, such as packing lists, um, bills of lading, export documents, anything commodity driven, hazmat paperwork, um, or if you're doing EDI shipping where you have the product information that needs to be passed on to your trading partners, uh, Starship leverages all of the item master data in GP and can bring that in. Uh, we can also hook into Extender through the SQL extension if you have additional data about your products, styles, formats, other information that we need to consume. Starship can uh, give you a little more flexibility than Starship, uh, excuse me, Shipgear offers in terms of working with the product information. Uh, we also hook into a bunch of different third-party applications. We have integrations with uh, a bunch of different EDI solutions, WMS software, e-commerce, uh, Shipgear, you're just limited to uh, just the, you know, the core uh, GP integration connecting in with UPS and FedEx. With that SQL extension, that also opens up options for us to connect into other uh, GP products in the, uh, the GP ecosystem, such as SalesPad, um, CRM, service databases, anything else that you want to uh, bring in data from or write results back to. If it's SQL based, Starship has the ability to kind of tie in all of those products into the same workflow with your ERP. Starship also offers rate shopping where you can do a cost comparison between all the various carriers that are available. Uh, so that depends on your licensing, what options are there, but you can see everything side by side, uh, looking at say all of your UPS, FedEx, postal rates together, as well as the option between shipping ground and LTL. We also offer batch processing where you can bring in a range of orders that can be done a number of different ways uh, through say GP batches, or you can select individual records. There's ways of consolidating multiple records. So maybe you have a one-to-many relationship between several sales transactions that are going to the same DC, or uh, you have multiple orders that are pending for the same customer. Starship gives you the ability to pull all those in together and process them at the same time. For EDI, I mentioned that uh, we also have hooks for that, a number of uh, popular EDI solutions in the, uh, the GP marketplace as well. Uh, we work with High Jump's True Commerce product, Redtail, um, Data Masons, One EDI, a whole host of uh, EDI solutions that are out there, uh, BSI, SPS Commerce, and really anything that's uh, EDI based, we're pretty much EDI agnostic, so we can hook into pretty much any platform that's available. E-commerce extensions, uh, we have that for a number of different marketplaces and shopping carts that are available. I'll show you a list a little bit later here in the presentation, what we have. 
It gives you the ability to have a bi-directional interface with your shopping carts or marketplace where Starship can link directly to um, your e-commerce orders, or more commonly with GP, you can put the e-commerce information, all those orders into GP, and we can link the platform and the e-commerce order number from your GP sales transaction, bring that through into Starship, and as we're updating the GP record with all the results, we can also hit the APIs for the e-commerce platform and put the results over on the cart. Finally, we have the uh, USPS discounted rates. If you license Starship, the post office module comes standard with the program. So you have the ability to do a cost comparison between the post office and uh, UPS and FedEx rates. I think you'll find that the post office can be very competitive, um, especially as we're entering into this world of dimensional weight where you're being charged by the amount of space it takes up on the truck versus the weight. Uh, the post office is a great alternative for certain types of packages. A little bit here about the different systems that can tie in with uh, Starship and uh, GP. So you have your whole front office, uh, you have your CRM, your e-commerce, um, any other applications that you're using to manage your business, as well as uh, supply chain applications with uh, EDI, WMS. Starship can kind of pull all that information together by connecting the entire workflow. As things go out the door and you're shipping, we have the ability to connect up all the other different systems and share information between all of those. So everything's in sync. You have the latest and greatest information about the status of your shipment and visibility to that action wherever it is that you're looking. As I mentioned, Starship has both small package and LTL functionality. You'll see a bunch of logos here for various carriers that we offer. We hook into um, probably about 20 different LTL carriers, as well as all the traditional uh, parcel carriers, UPS, FedEx, do DHL for international mail forwarding, uh, some regional carriers like Speedy in the Midwest, on track on the West Coast. And you also have uh, all those options for LTL as well. We're continually adding to that list. So if you have a carrier that you don't see here, there are our other options as well, just for printing a bill of lading, we have a couple of different 3PLs that we work with, as well as uh, some hosting providers that can get rates into Starship as well. So as I mentioned, the post office comes standard with Starship. Uh, that can offer you another lower cost um, alternative. Uh, so you can be price shopping and Starship could give you the option of shipping things through the post office at a cheaper rate. We can uh, automatically flip those rates for you, or you can have visibility to the rates within the rate shopping screen to make a more informed decision. Uh, some of the uh, different types of ways that we can save you money, uh, you have the standard weight and zone pricing, which could be based just on the weight or could be based on dimensions uh, with the changes that have gone into effect on the 23rd of January. Uh, USPS has expanded the dimensional weight um, rating to the entire country. Uh, so now in any zone, uh, you can have the length, width, and height uh, be compared to the weight of the package, and then that will you know, determine how the rates are going to be charged, similar to UPS and FedEx. Uh, ways that we can help uh, save you some money on that is taking a look at the types of packaging that you're using. There's a, the flat rate option, as well as cubic pricing that we can take a look at for you. Uh, one of the things that we consider is instead of using uh, the boxes are switching to soft packs and envelopes which could you know hold a lot of different uh, product um, but uh, because it uh, can be compressed does not take up as much cubic space in the truck so you're not paying for all that extra empty space in the box and then we can also do calculations on the total cubic uh, space that it takes up in the truck based on the dimensions. So by looking at uh, the type of packaging that you're using, you could be leaving money on the table by sending it with UPS and FedEx. So some examples of that here, um, looking at both uh, the, the weight and the dimensions. Uh, if you're just going by the standard weight here, in this first example, you have three and a half pounds that uh, prices out to $17.61. And you can see there's other options here where we could offer you by switching that easily to a flat rate envelope. You can bring that price down to $6.95, saving yourself $10.66. 
by implementing the cubic pricing. Uh, they can have that at $11.92, saving you $5.69. And if you do over 100 pieces of uh, cubic mail that qualifies per week, there's even deeper savings, so you could also bring that close to the, uh, the $10 mark. If any of those options are attractive to you, Starship uh, has, works with a, um, a partner organization or a visible supply chain where we can do a no cost uh, shipping analysis for you to take a look at your volume, see where you may be leaving some money on the table with UPS, FedEx, other options, and take a look at uh, what it is that you're doing for packaging. See if uh, that's a viable option for you to possibly shift some of that volume to the post office. Again, that's no cost to you. The post office module comes standard with Starship. Uh, one particular customer has saved over $400,000 by adding USPS into their uh, list of options uh, for order fulfillment. E-commerce, as uh, the sources of orders are continually changing, going to more of a uh, online marketplace and shopping cart model and versus um, through distributors or phone orders, EDI, um, we've expanded our list of offerings to keep pace with that. We have a number of different uh, marketplace options as well as uh, shopping carts that we continue to add to our suite of options. These can work in tandem with your ERP where we can bring that data in from the ERP and also update all the carts. This list is always evolving, so stay tuned for more platforms on the way. If you see, if you don't see the shopping cart or marketplace that you're currently using here, feel free to contact your sales rep or your customer account manager and let us know. We're always tracking requests and looking for other ways that we can expand the software to fit your needs. And with that, we're going to jump into a product demo. Let me just get out of here quickly. Okay, so this is the latest and greatest with Starship. It is our web user interface client. So it replaces the traditional desktop client that you may have been familiar with for say the last 10 years. It's recently undergone quite a facelift, uh, more or less the same application underneath, hooks into all the various platforms that I showed you with a new skin and user interface. It's been updated with a much cleaner and brighter look here. Uh, comparing that to Shipgear, you're no longer in the UPS WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager platform. Uh, working here on the uh, main Starship tab. This opens up in a browser. We support all the major browsers, uh, Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer, a little bit funky, um, but this is all um, on-prem currently. It's a browser-based application. Uh, we are also working towards having this available as a uh, multi-tenant cloud-based solution as well. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on that platform as well. Uh, working with your GP data here, you can do the same sort of thing that you do with Shipgear, where you can scan or enter a sales transaction. Uh, you put in the document ID into the window here, and that will call up the transaction. You also have this browse method here, where you can look at all the various transactions. You can search for a particular record. You can also add filters. If you want to drill down into a subset of data, you want to look for a particular type of transaction, a particular customer, a certain customer batch, any of those can be modified. So we'll go ahead and ship our first transaction here. Again, as you are familiar with WorldShip, um, that's similar to the keyed import where you're scanning or typing in a record. Uh, you could do that in that same first uh, field that you saw in the upper left-hand corner um, or select from the list of transactions. Uh, Starship has all of the user information instead of being on tabs. Uh, you can have that here in different widgets and you can move you know, up and down the page here if you want to open up uh, one of the widgets, you can kind of in inspect different information underneath here. So we're here in the, all the various accessorials or shipment options. 
and you can kind of drill down into that by clicking on the pencil icon here. Anything highlighted in red means that it is looking for some additional information. So here I have mine set where it's looking for dimensions. So as I mentioned, um, this is uh, an option that uh, you may want to take advantage of by putting things into certain types of packaging. Starship has a packaging database that can hold the length, width, and height of all of your packing material. Um, all of your custom packaging can be added as well as all of the carrier's packaging that comes standard. Uh, so that can be entered here on the fly. We also integrate with Cubiscan scales where that can capture the uh, length, width, and height, uh, basically the you know, cubic size of your product, compare that to the actual weight, or you can have that in the database here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick an envelope that'll have our dimensions. Uh, the weight can be pulled over from GP inventory, or we also have the option of um, putting that package just on a parcel scale, the same type of scale that you're using with WorldShip or Ship Manager today. I mentioned the line item data. You can see all the products and quantities uh, that came over from GP. Once we entered the weights and dimensions, Starship's going to rate shop that for you. And you can see here, you have a list of all the available options. You can display as many of those as you wanna see in the view here. They'll rank those by the cheapest down to the most expensive. So this came over with a ship method from GP as EPS ground, as you can see here, uh, based on the size of the package and the weight, um, it actually would be a little bit cheaper, save uh, over a dollar here by shifting that to the post office. And we can also rate this by transit time. So we can see we can get that there four days quicker than UPS if we move that over to the post office. Maybe the customer's preferences to leave that with UPS. We can also create rules that uh, don't uh, allow the user to change that. Uh, we can have uh, user level permissions on what fields can be changed. So if you want to disable the rate shopping or you want to make certain fields grayed out where they can't change that, we have the ability to do that. Or with the rate shopping, we have ship via rules, rate shop rules, uh, where we can add some logic to the program to automatically make that decision for your operator if you want. So we'll go ahead and process that here. F3 or ship and process will cr create that uh, label with your carrier, manifest that and then at that point, we'll print out all the documents, the labels, and push that data back into GP. So you have it there for customer service. And we'll bring you back to the landing page where you have all of your orders here. Cursor comes back over to the spot where you would select this, the uh, next sales transaction or document ID, similar to the key to import with uh, your ship gear software. So let's take a look at those results back in Starship excuse me, back in uh, Dynamics GP. Starship's going to update a lot of the same areas that um, Shipgear and your uh, World Ship or Ship Manager software do with some extra, you know, some extra hooks into the GP database and preferences that can be set. So first you have your notes here. Uh, we'll put in a standard note that can be modified based on what you wanna see here. Um, we'll put in the date that it went out, when it's going to get there, the carrier and service, the type of billing, the weight, number of pieces, and then a little breakdown here. So you have the tracking information uh, with the contents of the packages. So it'll tell you the quantity of products and which items went into those particular containers. Here we'll end the uh, shipment. So we put a header and a footer around our notes. If you're using those notes for any other purpose within GP, we're not gonna wipe out anything that you already have there. It'll keep the note exactly how it is, as well as the rest of the information that you've typed manually into GP. Batch ID can be set as a preference. Uh, so we've tagged the batch. I just have a ship batch that I move everything to once the order's been processed. We also are moving uh, the freight here. So that can include any kind of markup, discount handling fees that you want to include. And then we have the user defined field. So we have the tracking table here updated. We also have uh, the uh, cost of the freight here. So you can see 
the uh, with the markup, uh, 1057, our cost on that $9.19. And I also just put in a status here in one of our user defined fields. So out of the box, Starship can write data to any of the user defined fields and the header and the item. Uh, we can also pull from any of the uh, user defined fields as well. Um, any of the item information can be brought in. You have some other options that can be changed uh, with the address validation. We can also update the um, the address here. So if we switch that out, we change the address that can be inserted over here at the transaction level. If we change this carrier to the post office, we also have the ability here to change the actual ship method that was used. Uh, there's fulfillment options with Starship, uh, both built into Starship and with the WMS where we can override the shipped quantity. And you also have the actual ship dates. All those are preferences that can be set on the interface should you choose. As I mentioned, the SQL extension can expand your options with GP so we can get into extender or any other platforms that you need us to read or write data to. And really with that, it's basically unlimited. Any data that you wanna capture uh, can be moved from GP into Starship and any results that you wanna push back into GP or any other platform, uh, possibilities are really unlimited there. We'll go back over to Starship here, run another transaction. Just wanted to show you briefly an LTL transaction. Um, with LTL shipping, you have uh, two layers of packaging. You have your items that go in boxes and boxes that go on pallets. From the views here, you can see exactly which items and boxes are stacked on each pallet. And you can add those on the fly or Starship has packaging logic that could be set up around the items to automatically create case packs or to place certain items onto pallets. Come back over to our ship editor here. All of the accessorials, of course, are a little bit different uh, between parcel and freight mode. So if you have customers that require an inside delivery, lift gate, white glove service, any of that information can be mapped over from the customer card in GP and triggered through the integration. Freight shopping, of course, is available across all carriers. Uh, we have options uh, for direct carrier integration for about 20 different carriers, as well as um, some 3PL options. Uh, bills of lading are also available. We have uh, the VIX, the straight, um, and also uh, other options that are uh, available from each of the carriers. We can get those directly back through the carrier APIs. And you can see here, uh, Starship again, you know, went out, grabbed all the various rates. So you can see all of your LTL rates side by side. We brought this in as LTL, we'll uh, excuse me, RNL LTL. So we'll stick with that service as that came up as the cheapest. Go ahead and process that here. We'll take a look at some of those documents as well. So Starship has, as I mentioned, the ability to grab um, documents from the carriers. Uh, so you can have the pre-populated uh, forms with the formatting based on what the carrier returns. We'll just take the PDF and we insert the data coming from Starship and from GP. Or you have um, templates that can be modified within Starship to add any kind of formatting changes, adding logos, barcodes, any changes that you wanna make to those forms, you can have multiple iterations of the same document. So you have a straight bill of lading. You also have the VIX bill of lading. Uh, for shippers that have hazardous materials, we also have a hazmat bill of lading. And then any kind of multi-stop or truckload type shipments, we have a master bill of lading where you can group multiple sales transactions going to the same DC, or you have multiple stops along the same route, Starship can give you that master bill of lading. I mentioned also the export documents. You have, of course, UPS and FedEx have the uh, electronic export documents that you can enable. If your account is uh, set up for that with uh, UPS, you can turn those on. FedEx can just be enabled right within the carrier properties. You also have all of the carrier forms as well. Starship comes with an editable 
template for the commercial invoice, the NAFTA certificate of origin. We also have a shipper's letter of instruction and a US certificate of origin as well. So any of those are built into Starship and can be modified by yourself or we have techs that can take care of that for you. We also have email notifications. So any of those documents that are modified can be included as attachments. You may be familiar with eNotify from Shipgear. That's basically the ability to send out a custom email rather than using Quantum View or FedEx Ship Alert. Uh, you can send all of these through your own SMTP server. You have total control over the formatting here of uh, inserting data that can include a packing list, any kind of item data. So it lets the customer know exactly which products um, were shipped and we can even get down to the carton level to show which boxes and tracking numbers those are associated to. Any of those forms can be grabbed here uh, to be inserted as uh, attachments. So we can take any of the documents that Starship produces, automatically PDF those and uh, attach those to the emails that go out. So hopefully, if you're being proactive about notifying your customer, that cuts down on the number of inbound calls that you're receiving, having to go look into GP. Uh, of course, we're putting data back into GP, so you have it there for customer service. Um, but we do give you some other tools for the front office users to go and do lookups. Uh, there is a dashboard that's available with Starship. And that can be invoked here right from the client or that can be opened up separately in another uh, user interface. Uh, there are widgets here, which give you access to reporting. Uh, so that can easily be modified. You have some standard um, uh, reports here that uh, can give you um, reporting on on-time deliveries, any address corrections, um, take a look at your history over a certain date range. Those can be sorted by customer, by the type of sales transaction, by carrier. Uh, you've got charts here. This replaces the older uh, crystal reports that we had in uh, the last dashboard that we offered. So using all the latest technology here. And we also have this map here that can give you all the hot spots. Uh, so you can see where all of your um, activity is. So your top customers that you're shipping to different destinations around the country. Just a quick uh, peek here behind the scenes, I'll show you a few things before we wrap up the demo and the webinar. Now, if you're using UPS or FedEx, uh, basically we're replacing the WorldShip or the FedEx Ship Manager platform by hooking into the carrier web services directly. So you'll see a whole list of carriers here depending on your options that you go with. Let's take a look at UPS. And this is where you can configure all of your accounts uh, by adding your account to Starship, that's going to connect up to the carrier's API. Uh, once you do that, it's a one-time setup, it takes a couple of minutes. Uh, you, there's no longer any <clears throat> patches that you need to add for WorldShip, like on an annual basis. Uh, we keep uh, uh, that up to date for you. Um, any of the changes from month to month, whether that's incentive pricing, any, um, any services that you've um, contracted with the carrier for, um, the fuel surcharge, any of that stuff is coming in dynamically from the carrier. So it creates a mailbox or a meter number on the carrier server. And we're pulling all that information directly from the carrier in real time. So you do need an internet connection um, in order to access that. Uh, but once you're live with the carrier, that's a one-time setup and you no longer need to worry about patching your world ship or ship manager platforms. If you are familiar with Shipgear, you have that little Shipgear Exchange icon running down here in the system tray. Uh, that would be uh, their mappings to get into GP. So here we select our GP interface, and this is where everything gets mapped. So a little bit of different look and feel, but the same concept where uh, you're connecting into the sales transactions in GP, and you have a one-for-one -one relationship between all the fields on the Starship side, and then that's connected up to the data source here. So all of your GP fields are accessible here from a dropdown. Of course, with Starship, because we can get into items and extender, there's quite a few more options available here to connect into your GP database. All right, that's about all of the options we had prepared to share with 
the audience today. All right, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today.